Hello, Channel 3-ers. It's Friday night, and I thought I would go live spontaneously with a Friday night vinyl live video. Now, I'm doing this as a total surprise, so there's no one viewing yet. So I just want to talk about a couple of things. Uh, on Sunday, I got a video coming out. It is going to be... Um, Epic video, 22 minutes long. I got Mike from Vinyl Storage Solutions on. We're talking record sleeves, and he's got some cool new products out. So stay tuned for that on Sunday. Otherwise, I thought I would do the stream because uh, so many of us are just cooped up inside uh, with all the crazy stuff going on and seeing some other people do live streams. So I thought I would uh, go on and chat for a bit on a Friday night. Got a couple of people here. We got uh, nine millimeter Mike. We got Packers for Life. We got Sean Harrington. Good evening, gentlemen. Hope all is well. Are you guys uh, quarantined or, or locked in, um, stuck inside? I know many of us are. We got uh, Bill Elson on saying, What's up, man? Today was a good day. There's actually a couple new releases out today. The new album um, from Lucifer out, Lucifer 3. They are from Sweden. Um, in Germany, um, female fronted kind of doomy metal. And uh, that came out today. And the new Tesla Unplugged album came out today. I was hoping I would get both of them in the mail today, but with all the craziness going on in the world, both of those have been delayed. I won't get them in the mail for a couple of weeks. Um, I guess Amazon's having issues. Oh, we got a whole bunch of people on now. Gilly, I chatted with Gil earlier, Old Fart, Rock Oli. Um, Stuck inside, old fart stuck inside. Gil, I'm on your TV right now. Oh my, I hope it's uh, not too big. Cheers. I got some Crown Royal here. My favorite Canadian whiskey made about an hour from where I live. Um, mm -mm, okay, Tesla's from my town, says Jason. Is that Sacramento? I believe that's where Tesla's from. Uh, Gil says Talia and him are watching. Uh, okay, what's going on? So, what do you guys want to talk about tonight? We're all stuck inside. What should we chit chat about? New releases. Um, um, what else is going on? The new Tesla, I actually streamed it today, so I didn't actually come in the mail, but I streamed it via um, title and I thought it sounded pretty good. Um, I'm still listening to that new Lucifer album, Lucifer 3, kind of absorbing that. Uh, okay, we've got a whole bunch of people coming on here. So, um, FDO says, found a box of eight tracks in my basement. I'm excited to hook up the player tomorrow and try the ones that don't need fixing. Good luck with that. I just got into eight tracks last year when uh, Chris sent me over a player to try out. Got someone live, Gigabyte, from Tasmania, Australia. <clears throat> uh, Andy says, Frank. Christopher says, Frank, what's up? It's Christopher. Hello, everyone. So what's everyone doing tonight? What are we listening to? Um, um, uh, what else is going on here? Greetings from Miami. Adam says, um, what releases are you looking forward to? As I said, Tesla came out today. So I was looking forward to that one. Hoping my CD would arrive, but it's not. And Lucifer uh, 3. Some uh, female fronted um, kind of doomy metal. I was looking forward to that one as well. Um, what else is coming out? I think what else I have um, pre ordered. Those are the two I've been really looking forward to. Um, Luke says, Vinyl Me Please has a sale going on. Um, Grant. Ah, okay, it's Grant. There we go. From Australia. Uh, Jason's listening to uh, Queen Jazz album. Uh, we got Antonio from Oaxaca, Mexico. I love Mexico. I always enjoy going down there. Twisted's had it to bed soon. Got to work in the morning. Um, what's your favorite Doors album? Asks Satan West. It's a good question. Truthfully, I'm not a huge Doors fan. It's not that I don't appreciate or like the Doors. And Jim Morrison's cool. And Robbie Kruger, I believe that's how you say his name, is a guitar player. Um, okay, now there's a whole bunch of stuff coming on, so I gotta I gotta check this out. Uh, nine millimeter mic. It's a stream of the new Pearl Jam. Well, I guess that came out today too. Hey, what do you guys think of Pearl Jam? I gotta admit that's one of those bands. We talked about this on Facebook this week. One of those bands that I feel we're supposed to like, but I never really got big time into Pearl Jam. Nothing wrong with them. I just never got into them. Hello from Tennessee. 
Montana. Are you a Hendrix fan? Packers writes, I'm a, I love Hendrix. I got um, on the shelves there. I got a whole bunch of Hendrix albums. He was fantastic. Um, hi, Frank. Greetings from NC. Got a nice Black Sabbath Born Again remaster on CD in the mail today. I think that Born Again was one of the most underappreciated Black Sabbath albums. I wish she had done something else with Ian Gillen. Um, because I love that album one, but I wish it had been mixed or mastered a little bit better. I thought they had an opportunity maybe to fix that when they um, remastered it and re released it a while back. And um, no, it still doesn't sound great, but it's a good album. New Clutch Tim Allen says, New Clutch. Is there a new clutch? I love Clutch, but I didn't realize they had anything new coming out. So if in fact this is true, Tim. You, um, you, you, uh, you made my night. I have to go check that out. People got to listen to Misfits, Eric in Tennessee, Houses of the Holy Birthday is tomorrow. What a great album. What birthday is it? I'm trying to think what year Houses of the Holy came out 75, 76, something like that. Um, Ramstein, Jeff, Ramstein. So there was that thing in the news today where, um, the singer of Ramstein was or is in the ICU unit where he contracted this um, COVID-19. So it's just crazy. So many people are, are getting sick with this and the world's gone crazy and upside down, right? And we're all stuck inside and I'm not sure about you guys. I'm still working, but I've moved my office down here. So nine to five, my music room is my home office nowadays. Um, hello from Chicago. Getting a first pressing of Nevermind is soon in the mail. Those are hard to come by. Congratulations. Hi from Alabama. Love your channel. Thanks, Blue. Um, San Jose, California. I've been reading about California. You guys are all in lockdown there, right? Can you leave your homes? I think it's the same thing in England, various parts of the world where you can't leave your homes. Here we can still leave our homes. Um, most businesses are still open, but people are self-quarantining and social distancing and, and all that sort of stuff. Kids, the schools are closed. Um, thoughts on the new Nine Inch Nails album? Haven't heard that. Are you going to purchase a new Rush pressing of Permanent Waves? Um, I don't know. I have an original pressing on the shelves. Will I get the new one? Maybe. Um, need sleep, but listen to Frank do a live stream. Thanks, Eric. I wasn't even going to do this. Or else I would have promoted this live stream it's just um hit record and put together a quick thumbnail and the kids just went to sleep oh now things are coming fast and furious okay uh david Poole, you really need to check out kevel records release coming out soon now these are coming fast and furious i can't keep up here that one's okay um okay so he says you really need to check out kevel kevel records release coming out soon no love lost bliss it's melodic rock at its finest. Check it out. I do dig melodic rocks. I will. Uh, okay. I listened to Alice Cooper for the first time today. Right on, Jacob. Fantastic. Love it. Listening to Alice Cooper for the first time. I can't imagine this. This is like, sometimes you imagine like these classic movies and classic albums and classic artists. You imagine never having heard them before and just getting to experience it for the first time. That is awesome. Um, so he checked out um, Love It to Death and Killer. Killer. Two great classic albums, but you need. So you need to check out Billion Dollar Babies, 1973, I believe, from the original Alice Cooper band. That was, in my opinion, the best album they put out. Killer is really good, too. They're all fantastic. I don't think Alice, as a solo artist, ever... Um, was ever as good as he was with the um, Alice Cooper band. Greetings from Orange County, California from Dusty Spins. Christopher hasn't left home in weeks. So um, this is my first week working from home here myself. Um, Kevin West, hi from England. What time is it in England? I think it's a seven hour difference right here. It's 9 46 PM. So 9, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three, like four in the morning or something. Hello. Um, Hello from England. Couldn't sleep. I'm with you about bad record pressings. I have about a 90% failure rate. So Kevin is referring to the video. Um, I've been kind of on this bad pressings trip now for a month or so. And it happened when I got, I won't go through the whole story, but I've got the Aussie record. It's, um, hold on. Uh, 
I realize it's bad TV to leave. Anyway, talking about, uh, I started with this album, Ozzy Osbourne, Ordinary Man. And first one I got, the black vinyl from Amazon sounded like garbage. So I returned it. And second one was no good. And then they just cut me off. So I ended up getting the Urban Outfitters one. It's a little different than the Amazon one in that it's got the um, silver foil there. And um, it's a gatefold. It comes with a poster. And this one is on. Is my face really washed out? Maybe I'll turn this light down. Um, hold on. Oh, that's too dark. Okay, now I messed that up. Hold on. There. Anyway, so I got this Urban Outfitters one. It's all right. Um, I'm keeping that one. Okay, I totally got sidetracked. But I was talking about bad pressings. This is an issue. So um, Kevin was saying he has a 90% failure rate. Um, yeah, this is um, something we all really, you know, what do we do about it? I don't know. As I said in the last video, just return it and complain. That's all that we can really do. Um, okay. Let me go. I got a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Hey, brother. Seattle bound. Winnipeg are there. Hello. Hello. Um, waiting for the president of the U.S. Waiting for the president of the U.S. Kickstarter vinyl to get here. Not sure what that means. Alice Cooper is the band like Blondie. Technically, yes, of course. Everything up until and including um, Muscle of Love. Um my Aussie didn't have the heartbeat you mentioned, nor was it scratched up from old fart. That is fantastic. I heard a lot of complaints, too many complaints about that particular pressing. So I'm hoping the second pressing, they kind of fix that and, and that they get it right on the second try. Because we all know there were so many issues for many people with that first one. Um, cool. Uh, nighttime, Frank. Yeah, I had to fix the lights there. Um, okay, some more questions here. What's going on? Some of the Amazon album issues are due to poor shipping boxes and not using proper cardboard. Yes, for sure it is. But we can't just blame Amazon for this. Um, it, it comes down to the pressing plants and even albums I have not bought on Amazon. We've had these issues where you take them out of the sleeve. The record is scuffed up. Sometimes the record looks fine and you're still getting a lot of snap, crackle, and pop. Um, the Ozzy album in particular that was pressed really quiet. So you have to turn the volume up. And as a result, you're hearing more of that background noise. Um, oh, the presence of the United States of America lump. That's what Twisted is talking about. Okay, New Zealand. Uh, lockdown, isolation, watching Netflix, Ozark, season three. Love, my love your channel. Thank you very much. I just noticed that Netflix... Uh, it's just premiered Ozark season three as well. I plan to check that out tonight. Um, as soon as I'm done this live chat, that was a fantastic series. Um, mm, 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 okay. Ah, Gilly. <laughs> He's got his crown royal now too. Cheers. Enjoy watching you um, drown with other 90 people here. Yes. Uh, any comments on the Iron Maiden Final Frontier vinyl? So in terms of the album or in terms of the pressing quality, I bought the reissue a couple of years ago. I thought it sounded okay, but I'm not a big fan of Final Frontier. Um, I don't know. I thought their comeback album with Bruce, Brave New World was good. Then they kind of lost me for a little bit. Um, the last album was uh, not bad, but I wasn't a huge fan of that particular one. Celtic Bob or Celtic Bob says he got two pressings of that Aussie album and gave up. He may direct order from the Aussie site. That was like me. I had two of the black ones. Um, as I just showed you, I got the Urban Outfitters one here. Um, I think it's the same as the one from the Aussie site or very similar. It's got the colored vinyl. It's got the gatefold. It comes with the poster. This one was limited to 500. It doesn't sound great, but it sounds okay. It's still quiet, so you have to turn it up, and as a result, you hear more of the snap, crackle, and pop. But it wasn't warped, so <laughs> plus one for that. <clears throat> okay, can you do me a favor? If you guys are asking a question, can you put a question mark at the beginning of your comments? I'm getting a lot of comments and a lot of questions. I'm trying to keep up with them, but sometimes I have a hard time deciphering if I'm looking quickly whether it's a question or whether it's a comment. Both are good, but... Um, 
yeah, so please put a question there. Um, mm, 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 mm. Ryan Jackson. Oh, Ryan, oh, I got your albums here. Just listen to them today. They're great. Greetings from Southern California. I work at Amazon and still working right on. Otherwise, we're in total lockdown and everything closed. Hope you're doing well. I am. I was actually waiting, as I said earlier in this broadcast, for an Amazon shipment today with the new Tesla and the new Lucifer albums. Um, but now I'm told I'll take an extra week or two. So um, I'm not sure if that's a problem everywhere, these delays. But I'm assuming Amazon has its priorities at the moment, given the current world circumstances. Um, you have people hanging out in your other live session. I have another live session going on. Hold on. I maybe even better check that because um, I might have messed something up there. If there is, they should come on over here because um, there should not be another live session. Um, okay, here's someone. So this is a question I get from time to time. Trying to get a vinyl YouTube channel off the ground. Coming from a pro, any advice to get it going? I'm going to come back to that question, but now I'm curious. because Someone's telling me there's another live stream going on, and there shouldn't be. Um, if there is, I just want to check that out. So just bear with me, guys. I only see one, so hopefully we're all good. So this is a question I get asked in terms of someone wants to start um, a YouTube vinyl-related channel and kind of what to do. And I imagine it's really frustrating. I remember back in the beginning because we all share this passion um, for, for vinyl and for records and for music, and we want to connect with other like-minded people. But the question is, how do you make that happen? How do you achieve that? How do you connect with others? And I really think first and foremost, just if, if you're trying to start a YouTube um, vinyl channel, go make friends. Uh, and by that, I mean comment on other videos in the YouTube vinyl community and get to know people because it really is a community. That's the first thing I would say. The second thing I would say is do it for the right reasons. Most of us are not going to make a ton of money off of these videos. None of us. A few of us are going to make a living doing this. So if you want to do YouTube vinyl community videos, my suggestion is make friends. Make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. That's for the love of music and to want to connect with others. Um, and that's a good starting point. I mean, after that, it's get a good camera, get a decent microphone, keep your topics interesting. I know, and I enjoy these. People do a lot of uh, vinyl pickup videos and show and tell. And those are those are good, but I think really to get ahead of the crowd a bit, you got to do a little bit more. Maybe you know you kind of get tired of watching just vinyl uh, pickup videos. So explore different themes uh, and whatnot, and um, and have patience. Um, you know, I, I I'm far from being the largest YouTube vinyl community guy out there, um, and I've been at it for six years, doing a video a week. So if my sole purpose was to make a bunch of money, I think I would have quit a while ago. So just keep at it and, and have fun with it. That's other thing. You got to make sure you're having fun with it. Um, okay, now I've got to catch up with some more questions. Okay, again, if you're asking questions, please try to leave a question mark before your comment. Uh, what is the best fix for repairing a small spindle hole? I saw a video on Rockoli Records. Did a review of a tool that can do that. But what I use, and I just did it today, is my knife. I just really gently kind of go around the um, the record hole um, once, flip it over, I do it once, and then stick it on your turntable. If you do that carefully, um, it should work. Uh, 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 the upcoming Vandenberg album is an amazing album. Yeah, Adrian Vandenberg, Vinyl Dad. Hey, man, how's it going? Um, okay, here's one from Jackson Nickel. What's an album so expensive that you'll never realistically own it? you wish you could Ooh, i would love um the first press of the first molly crew album too fast for love on leather records but i'm not going to pay the two or three hundred bucks that that one goes for but i think that one would be very cool um there's some kiss albums from japan and box sets and whatnot that are pretty cool as well that i'll never own um 
But yeah, I think it'd be that first Motley Crue album. To this day, I'm kicking myself. Another one um, was Van Halen Balance. I was in a record store when we lived in Edmonton a few years ago, and they had a still sealed copy in the record store for 50 bucks Canadian, which is like $35 US. And I saw it, and I passed on it. Then I went back the next day, and of course, it was gone. And that album goes for a couple hundred bucks now. So I was very disappointed. Um, okay, this is Muskrat. Hey, how's it going? Just wondering if you have any of the Metallica Deluxe box sets. Also, which Metallica albums would be in your top three? I do not have any of the, the box sets. They've been reissuing all the classic albums. Some really um, in-depth box sets. My favorite Metallica album, Master of Puppets. Kill Em All, Ride the Lightning. It's almost a cop-out to <laughs> pick the first three Metallica albums. Um, I think I dig those ones the most. Um, you know, I kind of lost track of them for a while in the 2000s, but I loved um, their last album, Hardwired to Self-Destruct. I thought that was really good. Okay, this is Ryan. He's saying, let everyone know Amazon will only ship records that are already in stock. No new releases until things get better. Right now we are prioritizing essentials over everything else. Yes, I have heard this as well. So that's why I wasn't overly surprised when my two pre-orders um, did not show up today. Um, obviously, during these times, um, Amazon has to prioritize. Like We ordered dog and cat food from Amazon, which you've never done before. Um, but it was a way to get it um, to us quickly and cheaply. So, yes, I think we all understand that. We all have patience um, with these sorts of things. That's why... I knew those albums are coming out today, so I streamed them on Tidal earlier today. So sounded good there. Um, okay. Uh, oh, thanks, Josh. Josh says, what's happening, Frank? Just wanted to say thanks for your videos from someone just getting into vinyl. You're awesome. Welcome to Club Vinyl, Josh. I appreciate you watching, and I appreciate that um, comment. Okay. I'm getting parched here a little bit. One second. Okay. So, Vinyl Dad, what's your favorite song to jam on the guitar over and over? That's a good question. I've been so busy lately. I have not been playing a lot of guitar and actually haven't jammed now and like with the guys in the garage for like six months. Um, and truthfully, when I jam, I like to play originals or just start jamming on a riff or just start like a blues jam. And I don't know, just take it from there. You know, without really a plan and kind of see where it goes. But what song? I mean, I just like love playing Phantom of the Opera by Iron Maiden. That's fun to jam on. Um, some Black Sabbath stuff, maybe. Um, those are always fun. But I like just um, just jamming, like freeform stuff. That's a lot of fun and doing original stuff as well. Kitten Care question. Do you ever go into the Steve Hoffman Music Forum to peruse the vinyl community there? I do. There's always some good information there, some really in-depth stuff. A lot of people much more knowledgeable than I am. Um, so I do go over there. If you're if you're interested in um, really geeking out about records and music, I highly recommend the Steve Hoffman forums. I don't go there often, I guess. Maybe I check in a couple times a month. I don't think I've ever posted anything. But it's definitely a good forum. Um, I go there also to look at people's comments on gear and, and needles and that sort of stuff. And so I saw a wealth of knowledge about various record pressing. So it is a really good forum to check out. That's a Steve Hoffman forum. All right. Um, what else do we have going on? Um, do you have the Metallica and Lou Reed LP Lulu? Oh my God. No, I do not have that one. I don't know. Should I check that out? Let me know. Is that one worth checking out? What do you guys think about the album Metallica did um, with Lou Reed, Lulu? I was spooked by it for some reason. I never checked it out. No, but tell me if I should. Um, again, another Pearl Jam question. This one from Angels Vinyl Spinning. And I'm not a huge Pearl Jam fan. It's one of those bands we talked about on Facebook earlier this week. It's one of those bands I feel I should like and that we're supposed to like. And they are, um, they are well regarded and they are critics' favorite. I just never got into them. I don't know why. Um, they weren't my thing, though I respect what they do. 
Um, oh my gosh, there's like a ton of questions here now. I'm going to pop in quickly. It's been 25 minutes. There's been some technical issues, but um, um, okay, so here we go. Lulu is horrible, says Dave. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lulu is the worst album. Don't you ever get it, says Gil. Now, I've never even listened to it. You guys, you got me curious. I might have to stream that one. As I said, I lost. I lost track of Metallica for a lot of the 2000s, um, but I hear I don't hear a lot of good things. Uh, Jackson Nickel, I'm curious what the general Canadian population was to Neil Peart's passing. Any different from the U.S. or anywhere else? Um, that's a good question. I think it was pretty much a worldwide common um, reaction. A lot of people were stunned and shocked. Um, yeah, it's very, very surprising for a lot of people. So I, I think it was sort of a worldwide, um, reaction to, it. I'm not sure if it was any stronger in Canada. I mean, those guys were from Canada, um, the Toronto area and hopefully Getty Lee and Alex Lifeson are able to come back and do some sort of project. Um, I know Getty's been promoting his big book of base, but hopefully we get something else going on. Um, do you like grunge from Andy? It's a good question. I've, I've been not struggling with this, but I've been pondering it like 20 years later. How do we define grunge and what was grunge? Because back in the early 90s, it seemed like any music that came from Seattle was called grunge. But if you think about it, really, besides a common geographic location, what do bands like Nirvana and Alice in Chains and Soundgarden? Pearl Jam really have in common, I guess, in the sense of the antithesis, the sort of the hair metal thing. And, um, you know, in some respect, there's a breath of fresh air because at that time, as those of us who lived through it remember, you know, by the time we hit like 91, 92, there was um, things weren't so great in many respects in the music scene and the hair and the makeup and whatnot. And, a lot of the lyrics were getting really silly. Um, so I kind of struggle with the definition of what is grunge. I love Soundgarden, particularly um, everything up to and including Bad Motorfinger, Dig Alice and Chains to this day as well. Those are my two favorites from that particular scene. Okay, I'm going to uh, catch up on some um, other questions here. Again, please leave a question mark if you're asking a question because I'm getting a lot of comments, which are cool. But if you have a specific question, I'll be be able to see it easier if you put a, a question mark there. Ryan, thanks for doing the stream tonight. Yeah, no problem. Got a deck out, says Blue. Thank you for tuning in while you could. Andy says he's not a fan of grunge. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, there's a good point. So Stone Temple Pilots were considered grunge, and they were not even from Seattle, but from L.A. That's the whole thing. That's I'm confused by this word grunge. Was it anyone who wore, like... A flannel shirt, shorts, and combat boots? Was it an image? Um, I don't get it. I do dig Stone Temple Pilots, though. Neil Young equals God. Um, I did a video a few years back as well. Neil Young was not born in my hometown. He went to high school here. So I did a video a few years ago where we checked out his um, childhood home and where he went to junior high school and, and whatnot. Um, mm, 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 mm. here's one, Frank. Do you think we will ever get to see the rest of Ozzy's discography re released on vinyl instead of that $500 box set? Well, I sure hope we do. And I did a video again on this, and some people took my criticism to be a statement that, um, a criticism of Ozzy, I guess, or me being not a fan of Ozzy. I think um, there's a musician out there called Danko Jones who has a podcast. And the way he said it once, he said, my fandom is not unconditional. Meaning um, just because I'm a fan of an artist doesn't mean I will not be critical when I think they've made a bad move. And I see why Ozzy released that $500 box set. Um, you know, it was a special package made for fans who could afford it. Um I was not willing to spend $500 to get all those albums. Many of them I already have, but there's some missing pieces in there. I think many of us 
would like to get on vinyl. So I sure hope that it is released on or re-released as individual records at some point. And I think it will. I mean, there's money to be made there. And as we all know, Sharon is not going to leave cash on the table. I mean, who knows if it'll happen in 2020 or somewhere down the road, but I'm optimistic that those albums will be released individually. Okay. What else do we got here? Um, more people talking about grunge thing was an attitude. Yeah, I can see that. Um, it was a uniform. It was an attitude. It was a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. Hey, Paul Kane. I don't know how you did that, but your comment is all highlighted and stands out. So I saw that one. Um, who will be Stone Temple Pilots' lead singer? I thought they had a lead singer. Are they did that guy leave? If so, those guys have no luck whatsoever. Um, I remember I saw their other band in the late 90s talk show. I saw them opening up for Foo Fighters. Um, I mean, those guys have had so many lineup changes. How bad is the virus where you are, Frank? Um, this is from Nice Guy Mick. So again, we're talking about coronavirus, and that's why many of us are are um, inside and, and socially isolating and whatnot. And yeah, in my area, there's only been one, only, I mean, one death. It's one death too many, but there's only been one, there's been one death and, and a few dozen, I'm not even sure what the number is, um, um, people diagnosed with it. And, you know, as a result here, it's like many places in the world, schools have been closed and, and we're, kids are learning at home and I'm working from home and, and, and all sorts of stuff going on. But uh, so far, um, it's not as bad as it is elsewhere. So hopefully we can tame this thing. We can get back to normal life really soon because I'm one week in here working from home and I'm itching to get back to the office and the kids are itching to get back to school and all that sort of stuff. But who knows how long that's going to take. Uh, okay, Paul's got this highlighted again. He says it's magic. Um, okay, please stay safe. Yes, always. Uh, I did have to run out to the grocery store today, but... Um, disinfect six feet apart it's kind of have you guys been to grocery stores this week i'm not sure if, what's like in your area but here even at the 7-eleven they have like lines of tape on the floor six feet apart and that's where people are supposed to stand so that you don't get more than six feet i mean you stay you stay separated by six feet so people are listening and stuff these pieces of tape it's kind of what a crazy time we're in okay again if you have any questions please put a question Mark beside um, in front of your question. Um, Jason, play the Channel 33 RPM song live on guitar. I don't have my amp in this room. It's in the next room. Maybe next live stream I will. Uh, Paul, you have a pure white Ikea chair. What's not to love? Yes, you guys never see this angle, I guess. Type on my Ikea chair there. And I brought this portable heater into the music room. Um, I said earlier, this has been my work office this week as well. Or something. The basement's been chilly this week. It's like spring has sprung here. Today seemed like it was actually spring outside, so it hasn't been terribly cold. It's been chilly down here. Ah, now, now everyone's figuring out this trick of having orange on their um, on their comments. I think you have to put at channel 33 RPM. Yeah, it's Paul says. Paul says, use the at sign in front of the name in the chat. Okay. Which singer do you own the most vinyl of? Asks Mini Disc. Which singer? Which singer? So you're talking about a solo artist? I mean, there's three bands I probably have the most of on vinyl. Alice Cooper, um, both solo and the Alice Cooper band. Black Sabbath, Judas Priest, Kiss. Um, we got tons of stuff from those guys. <clears throat> okay. Um... Okay, now we're talking about grocery stores and coronavirus. Uh, Lance Lust says he works at a grocery store. Nothing terribly new except uh, plain, a pane of glass in front of cashiers. I did notice that today. I noticed that at the grocery store. And I also went to the post office. Um, and I noticed they had kind of a plexiglass thing happening there as well. Um, nothing new at the grocery store. Well, I can think of one other new thing at the grocery store. You can't find toilet paper still. Like it's been a couple of weeks. Where's all the toilet paper gone? It's 
so weird. The other thing at the um, pharmacy I noticed today was low in stock was shampoo. I have no idea why I went I went to buy some shampoo and literally the shampoo section was down to like one third of what's normally there. It was mostly it was two thirds empty, which is crazy. So like we've gone through the the Lysol, we've gone through the disinfectant wipes and the toilet paper. Now are people hoarding shampoo and why shampoo? Or is it just this one store I went to? I don't know. Uh, okay, anyway, back to the questions. Um, Liam, what's your opinion on early Def Leppard as well as the Coverdale Page album? Um, I dig early Def Leppard. I love everything up until Pyromania. And this is a timely question because I just noticed this week that Def Leppard has released that early years box set. I've been into Tidal lately. I've been streaming on Tidal and I love their. Um, high def, whatever it's called, or master quality recordings. And I noticed some Def Leppard on there. So I'm going to check that one out. Coverdale page album was cool as well. Um, okay. What am I missing here? Okay. Got Metal Jesus Rocks on here. Hello, sir, Jason. High and Dry is still awesome. Yes. High and Dry is a fantastic album. Those first three, On Through the Night, High and Dry, Pyromania. And Hysteria, eh, I mean, it's a classic album at this point, but the first three, fantastic. Back when they had balls and guitars. And I was going to say real drums, but that's not the case. I recently read that the drums on Pyromania are, in fact, a drum machine. Um, still a good album, though. Okay, what else we have here? Again, please put a question mark in front of your comment if you're asking a question, because I got a lot of stuff coming through here. And some of them not catching. Or did that whole orange highlight thing that some of you are doing. Um, how many albums do you own? You're talking about vinyl. Um, I actually updated my spreadsheet today. It's not huge. I got just over 1,300 records on the shelves behind me. And I say not huge. I say that just because I know some people, just in the videos I watch, have these huge collections, like thousands and at 1,300 records plus, I don't know, I've never counted my CDs and cassettes and everything else, I'm finding it almost unmanageable. Like you sit down and I fully acknowledge that some of these records I'm never going to have a chance to listen to again. And that's sort of a fine line. It's like, how many records is too much? And, and we've talked about this before, and that's why, to an extent, I've really slowed down on my record purchases. I'm not sure about you guys, but um, um, yeah. Yeah. Between having time to listen to them all and the issues we've spoken about with the quality of record pressings, I've kind of slowed down. Okay, we're talking Def Leppard. First three albums are the best. Um, oh, hold on. There's a toilet paper comment here. I work at a warehouse for a supermarket, and when the toilet paper comes in, it goes out to the stores, and it can be up to two days to get more. So there's a lag there. What's your cheapest buy album? I don't know, but I got, uh, I don't know. Where's this one I want to show you guys? I'm not sure where I put it, and I don't want to be fussing around too much, but Lucifer's Friend, their debut album from 1970, is freaking fantastic. And I found a copy in the dollar bin a couple weeks ago. Super happy about that. Okay. Um, mm, 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 mm. where are we? Okay, again, from Metal Jesus, Stephen Piercy's View to a Thrill solo album is excellent. All songs based on James Bond movies. I've seen that album, it's on Frontiers Records, I believe, out of Italy, but I had no clue that it had a theme running through it in terms of all the songs based on James Bond movies. Wow. I dig Stephen Piercy. So Stephen Piercy is the singer of Rat. And apparently Rat will be working on uh, an album. If you can call the new incarnation of Rat, right? This is the, the controversy. It's Stephen Piercy, the singer, and it's Juan on bass. And those are the only original members. Um, <clears throat> Hi, Frank. What's your most expensive record? My most expensive record? Well... I was humbled last year when someone sent me Kiss, the originals, two completely 
unsolicited uh, and completely by surprise. That's probably my most valuable record. Um, I'm super happy to get that. Have you had any offers on your Quiet Riot album? I'm not sure what that question means. Um, I said before that the first album I ever bought with my own money back in like 83 was Quiet Riot's Metal Health. Uh, uh, slang. Okay. Again, uh, for metal Jesus, we're talking about slang that I think is, it's a Def Leppard album. I think that was, um, probably one of Def Leppard's most underappreciated and underrated albums. They were sort of criticized at the time for taking a bit of a detour from the traditional sound um, incorporating some more electronic tones and again back to the whole grunge thing maybe a bit grungy but I think that album is fantastic it was the first one featuring Vivian Campbell on guitar and Vivian took a real lead in the songwriting as well um, great album if you haven't heard Def Leppard slang in the air you're okay with something a little bit different I highly recommend um, checking that one out where else are we now Mental health. Um, okay. Frank, do you own anything by Prince? Yes, I have a handful of Prince albums. I love Purple Rain. I actually just listened to Purple Rain today, one of my all-time favorite albums. Bogan's Guy to Wine, my friend Sampy in Australia. Good day, Frank. Hope you and yours are staying safe. We are. Hope you are as well. <clears throat> okay. Show us some records. Hmm. I don't have much right beside me. I got some on top of me here. Um, what can I show you guys? Hmm. I might get to that, but there's so many questions here going on right now. Where is the missus tonight? She actually just went to bed, but I have been, we have been talking because um, we do the AMAs. Uh, I do AMAs with Sherry periodically. She hasn't been on the channel since December. So we are going to tape an AMA next week somewhere here yes so i kind of script out my episodes to an extent um this is the one for i got two amas in terms of the questions here anyway i got some bullet points i like to make so this will be coming up we'll be recording two amas this one is for video one this one's for video two so stay tuned for those in april um, did you get a chance to set up that U-turn turntable? So uh, you may have seen last week, I got a U-turn Orbit basic turntable in the mail. I have set it up and I've been um, playing around with it. And it's actually in the room next door. It's sort of like the, the home theater room and where as a family we watch movies. So I do have it set up there. I've actually shot and done um, the video. So uh, I dug it. Stay tuned for my full review coming up. Not this weekend, but next weekend. Paul Kane, pour us some whiskey. I've been sipping on mine. This is my favorite beverage on a Friday night. That's just Crown Royal on the rocks. Um, there's, there's probably a couple ounces in there. The ice is now well melted, though. Uh, Frank, we never got to meet your kids yet. Sometime in the future. Yes, you have got to meet my kids. Um I did a video in December where they were on it and they were trying out one of those cheap um, suitcase turntables and they really enjoyed being on that episode. So check that one out. Okay. Paul K, no spoilers. If you're talking about the U-turn orbit, I won't say anything more, but stay tuned. I think for next weekend. Ooh, this is a good question. You didn't do anything special when you hit 33.3. Um, I could do, I could put together some sort of really nice giveaway for that. 33.3. Thank you for the idea. I will keep that in mind. All right. Where are we? Um, UK vinyl and audio file. Good night, Frank. It's 3.20 in the UK. 3.20 in the morning, I'm guessing. It's 10 because it's 10.20 p.m. here. So have a good night, my friend. Um, when the ice melts, that's a good sign in more ways than one outside. The snow is almost all melted today. Really felt like spring and when the ice melts in your whiskey, that's good too. Kind of, um, I like sipping on it. 
Um, mm, 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 mm. Okay, yes. So we're talking about the uh, cheap suitcase, st um, <laughs> cheap suitcase turntable video. Um, it was a Victrola turntable episode. It was my brother's idea. He said, Frank, you should do a video where you buy the cheapest turntable on Amazon and just open it up and give your impressions of it. So I found the turntable there. I believe it was $33. And I had no idea which direction this video was going to take. And I was kind of taking It's not the best turntable, obviously, out there. It's a starting point, and kids love it. So um, it was really cool to see them happy with that. Okay, Karabi Crew, most anticipated album for 2020. By the way, Karabi Crew has got the best record collection, man. Check out his videos and his um, Instagram. It shows some really cool stuff. Most anticipated album for 2020. Did Ozzy come out in 2020? Did this one come out in 2020? If it was, this was my most anticipated, and now we have it. What else is coming out this year? Um, I could log. Let's see what else I have pre-ordered from Amazon. Uh, what else is coming out? This is bad video. I shouldn't be pausing like this on here. Um, just quickly checking my Amazon orders. Do you know what I'm looking forward to, actually? I'm looking forward to Rob Halford's book. I did pre-order that. I'm sure this guy has got some fantastic stories to tell. His new book is available for pre-order on Amazon. And when does it say it comes out? September 29th. It's called Rob Halford Confess. You can see that. So Rob Halford, obviously, singer Judas Priest. Um, probably the first gay man in heavy metal or or to come out of the closet or whatever the terminology is so i'm really looking forward to that rob halford is um my favorite singer probably of all time and um yeah i'm definitely looking forward to him okay here we go uh, where are we now i'm really gonna catch up to some of these comments okay so what, in your opinion, is the best vinyl listening setup for under $800, including a turntable, speakers, and an amp? That's a hard one, man. I'll have to come back to that one. Um, there are options out there, um, new and used. If I was going new, and my budget was that limited and needed everything, I would probably get like um, a Fluence or a Project um, maybe something with a built-in preamp and get some powered speakers. You can go for it all uh, that in, in one setup. Uh, new Joe uh, Satriani album next month. Yes, I did hear his new tune. Um, okay, let me catch up here a bit. I'm starting to lose my voice. Uh, we've been doing this for 48 minutes. I might have to log off here shortly, but I don't want to because this is a lot of fun. Okay. Um, have you heard a band called Ginger? Is this getting this question again? Yes, I have. Uh, my friend Andy introduced me to them last year. Um, I'm not sure kind of what you'd even call that. Heavy, modern metal. Some pretty wild stuff there. I think they're from France. I could be wrong. Some cool stuff there. Um, okay. So, okay, we've got uh, Paul weighing in about the question about an all-in-one for $800. He says you go with the Fluence RT85 and some powered bookshelf speakers. Probably a good choice there. Hey, Frank, if you could only keep one record album from your collection, what would it be? Okay, don't laugh at me, guys, but it would be the first record I bought with my own money back in 19... 83, 84, when I was 10 years old, my parents took me to a downtown department store to buy it. And that's quite right. It's Metal Health. First album I ever bought. Do I listen to it often anymore? No, I probably haven't heard it in a few years. Do I still like it? I guess it's okay. But sort of, the, I'm a sentimental guy in some respects. So it's just the whole idea. That's the first record I ever got. So that's the one I have to keep hold on to. Um, 
because it's uh, it's got so much history. <clears throat> okay. Karabi Cruz checking out. Yes, it's getting late. Fake signed Kiss album. From, yes, you're right. I mentioned that on another episode too, where Sherry and we were dating back in like 2003. She bought me a copy of Kiss Destroyer autographed, and the autographs turned to be fake, but uh, it was the thought that counts. So I have to keep that one as well. Okay, where are we? Are we still. Um, I'm having trouble keeping up with all these, but this is fun. Um, okay, where are we here? The new Extreme album coming out. Yes, that would be cool. I'm an Extreme fan. I think Nuno Betancourt is probably one of the best... I'm going to call him a metal shredder, but that's probably selling him short. He's one of the better guitarists out there and probably one of the better guitarists to come out of the 80s. I mean, he was a shredder, but he's so much more... Um, I think he's he was... Uh, Rihanna's touring guitar player. Um, I mean, he shreds, but he's a well-rounded guitar player. He's got such an excellent singing voice, like in extreme between him and Gary. The way they harmonize is awesome. He's a great singer. Do I like Jane's Addiction? Yes, I do. You can catch Priest on their 50th anniversary tour, I hope. The odd thing was their last album, they played every single freaking city in the world, um, and they didn't play here. I have no idea why. I was so disappointed. I love those guys. I've seen them many times. Probably my favorite band of all time. Okay, where are we? Greetings from Mexico. Hola, mi amigo. Um, okay. You're trying to carry on 124 separate conversations. I am. This is. I get more used to these live streams as I do more of them. But Paul's comment is, I'm trying to keep up with 124 conversations at the same time. And that's my issue here. I'm trying to respond to as many as I can. Here's what I want to answer, though. I said, which song influenced your channel 33 RPM theme song? So to tell you the truth, I recorded that nine-second song kind of as a joke for myself for a couple of reasons. Um, one, I play guitar, obviously, but I'm not a singer <laughs> whatsoever. So I really kind of had to um, um, convince myself I could do it or I could try to do it. Second of all, I never had any intention of actually, pardon me, using that song um, or playing it in public. It just some jingle I did. Um, just for the hell of it. I never intended to or wanted to um, post it anywhere, but I eventually did. So the, the inspiration for that was twofold. Um, I was kind of thinking, started off, I kind of wanted to write like a Ramones thing, believe it or not. And I'm not sure what part of it, looking back on it, has anything to do with the Ramones. And the guitar I thought was kind of Motley Crue-ish maybe. So it was like a mashup of Motley Crue and the Ramones doing like a really bad television jingle or something. Channel 33. So that's sort of the inspiration for it. And I recorded it um, on my Mac. Um, and I just, again, did it for myself. I can't remember if I used GarageBand or if I used Logic Pro for that one. It might have even been GarageBand. Anyway, lo and behold, I did that six years ago. And i um, still using it to this day. And every once in a while, I say, I'm going to get rid of the Channel 33 RPM theme song. I'm going to try something different. Or I'm going to get, maybe I don't even need a theme song. But I get a lot of comments saying, Frank, keep it, leave it. And I suppose it's one of the things that makes this channel unique in, in terms of I do have a theme song. So I'm keeping for the time being. So thank you for that question. Okay, uh, let me pick another one here. Uh, okay, so we're talking about the Channel 33 RPM theme song, and uh, Media Musing says he whispers, and a third in between the lyrics of the theme, Channel 33 and a third RPM. Yes. I remember when I put that one out, someone said, um, well, obviously you don't know what you're talking about because records don't spin at 33 RPM. They spin at 33 and one third RPM. And as well, for that same reason, the name of your channel makes no sense. I thought that was such... A <laughs> funny comment. I mean, because anyway, I'm not even going to go there. Yes, I know records spin at 33 and one third RPM, but I was not going to call the channel channel 33 RPM 
channel 33 and one third RPM. That's funny. Yes, keep the theme. I will. Um, hey, Billy. How's it going? Billy Hurst. Um, we did a cassette exchange a while ago, and Billy has been doing some really good um, live streams on his channel as well. Billy is a country musician, great singer, great guitar player, and he's been entertaining us on his channel. So thank you very much, Billy, for doing that. Let's pick another question here. Um, is there a local record shop that you use a lot. You know, it's been a funny time with this whole COVID situation going on. I'm not even sure what record stores are open locally anymore and which ones aren't. Um, um, I know there's one I usually go to every Saturday. I take one of my daughters to piano lessons and I pop into um, Planet of Sound every Saturday and chat with Dave, the owner guy. And I know that they are closed now for the foreseeable future because of this coronavirus. Then there's another store downtown I like called Into the Music. And I know their doors are closed because of this whole situation. There's staff there, but you have to call ahead or knock on the door. My favorite local record store is a store called the Winpeg Record and Tape Club. He's still open. But, um, you know, how long is it really until more of these stores really have to close their doors in parts of the world. I know many stores and retail operations, except for the most essential ones have been asked to close their doors. Um, here, there's no such restrictions yet, but many stores are just closing just because of the whole situation. So I'm looking forward to when we get out of all this, so we can go freely shop for records again. Okay. What else do we like here? I'm going to do this again, guys, for uh, probably another five minutes, then I'm going to log off, but I'm going to do more of these Friday Night Vinyl Lives because it's a lot of fun. And this one's been a learning experience for me because I've been trying to read too many comments and probably answer too many questions at once. So I'll be more focused next time, I promise. But I'm having a lot of fun here. Um, okay, where are we? Okay, I got some people logging off. It is getting late. It's 10.33 p.m. here. So I'm going to go for a bit. Then I'm going to chill out. I'm going to watch an episode of Ozark on Netflix. And then I'm going to go to bed. Yes, please do these regularly. Um, depending what the definition of regularly is, I will do them um, more often. That's what I'll tell you. 8.34 p.m. in Phoenix. I thought Phoenix was in Central Time. I guess Phoenix then would be on Pacific Time. Okay. Liam, if you buy a Technics 1200, will you complete the ensemble with some silver face gear? So I said this on a recent episode where my goal for 2020 is to buy a Technics um, SL1200. And I actually found one locally. I was chatting with a guy about buying it. It was a MK2. It was a 1210. It's black. And he wanted 600 Canadian dollars for it, which is, um, I mean, a quick conversion. I think it's like 450 US dollars. So reasonable, maybe a little bit on the high side. Um, but he says it's in good condition. So I did want to check it out. But this whole, again, coronavirus and this whole situation going on, I said, you know, can we maybe wait until things settle down a bit? I understand if you want to sell it to someone else, no problem. There are other ones out there, but I would like to check that one out. Will I buy a silver face uh, receiver to go with it? Mm, probably not. I do have some silver face stuff. I got a Kenwood amp, real beast. Um, I use that one quite regularly. It's upstairs in the family room. And I also have my realistic 50 pound receiver. That one's a real beast. Um, and I just got to get bring that one to the shop when this craziness is over and just get, get it serviced. But I'll use that one as well. Metal Jesus, very cool hanging out with you, Frank. Love the channel. Rock on, buddy. Love a good weekend. Thank you very much, Jason. Uh, likewise, one of my favorite YouTube channels, Metal Jesus Rocks, um, particularly when uh, you guys get into the records and the retro gaming. I love retro gaming. You can see my Coleco up there. You can see my Pac-Man. Love retro gaming. Tons of fun. Um, okay, we're talking about the SL1200 again. Paul says 450 is a pretty good price. Yeah, I mean, it's not a steal of a deal, but I think it's... Um, it's uh, it's uh, it's worth checking out depending on the condition. 
Okay, where are we here? Um, what's your opinion on vomiting on COVID-19? You know, this whole situation, I don't think it's completely sunk in for me. I'm not sure about you guys, but the reality of this, like I, th in some ways I, I feel like kind of going about my regular business and maybe it's just like an extra long weekend at home, but really the world is in a crazy place right now. Um, we talked about the toilet paper shortages earlier, which is ridiculous. Um, I don't even want to get into all this. I just hope that everyone is safe and healthy. And, um, you know, in our household, we're just listening to what the medical experts are saying and um, doing social distancing, which just seems to be the buzzword of the day and um, self-isolation. I mean, I go out, went to the grocery store today went to the post office, that sort of stuff. Um, but being reasonable about it because we can still, we're not confined to our homes by law yet. What the rule is here right now is that you have to avoid gatherings of 10 or more people. And um, many stores have obviously shut down and whatnot. Uh, okay, let's do a couple more guys. And then I am going to say au revoir, but I'll be back on Sunday. And I hope you can tune in. It's an epic episode. I've edited it. It's 22 minutes long. I have a special guest, Mike from Vinyl Storage Solutions. Mike makes my favorite inner and outer sleeves. It's not a sponsored video. You cannot pay money to be on this channel. It's like supporting companies and businesses who I think do a good job. Mike is doing a fantastic job. So please tune in on Sunday for that video. Again, I said it's an epic, epically long video. It's 22 minutes. I think our conversation was like 40 minutes and I edited it down. I re we recorded it like a few weeks ago before all this COVID madness um, started um, happening. But please do tune in on Sunday for that. Again, we're talking about COVID here a little more. Got um, a comment from Dallas, Texas, where the area has been on lockdown. And just about everyone I know is out of work. I think that's going to be the long-term impact. Um, I'm not an economist. I'm not a health expert. Nothing like that. But it seems like the impact of this is going to resonate for a very long time. I'm lucky. I'm still working. I have the ability to work from home. Um, we've been urged to work from home whenever possible. Some of us still have to go into the office for a variety of reasons. But um, um, who knows what's going to happen. The great toilet paper shortage, uh, week three of quarantine in Michigan, uh, all this craziness, guys. I just wanted to do this live stream and we can get away from all that. I know a lot of us are just stuck inside, so I, I would like to do some more of these. Um, I am, I love all these questions, guys, but I am losing my voice. Um, I am going to leave you guys here. I'm going to enjoy the last of my beverage. I'm going to watch Netflix. It's 1039. I'm going to go to bed and start a new tomorrow. So thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, be well and Godspeed to all of you as well. I, in, um, in all sincerity, I appreciate all your support. I appreciate all you watching these videos for the past, whether you've been um, a subscriber for the past week or for the past six years. Uh, always love hearing from you guys. Always love the fact that you watch the videos. Never take any of that for granted. So thank you all. Have a wonderful weekend. See you on Sunday. And as we always say, until next time, keep on spinning. Cheers.